All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming with the Rico Report, a February 22nd edition of a Rico Report. And if you don't know, these Rico Reports get really random, man. We have usually like one major topic, maybe two major topics like this video, and then we just have a bunch of random updates and informations that I just figured, hey, man, this is the type of stuff I'm interested in and I like to hear about. It may not be major Commander's news, but it's just something I want to throw out there, you know, just to make us all smarter fan bases and a lot of these things are just honestly just fun and comedy and random pointless i can even admit and so we're just basically here for fun i'm here to inform y'all there's some really important news in this some really interesting things as well but overall this is just going to be more fun than anything else so first of all the washington commanders have signed two players granted they're practice squad players but i want to talk about how this is still like officially the first signing that adam peters and dan quinn have made technically which is really interesting that says a lot about who these two players are compared to maybe other practice squad players are these the two highest priority practice squad players from the 2023 commander season according to adam peters and dan quinn the guys that they're most interested in to have the best chance of making the 53-man roster and maybe even playing for us this upcoming season also anthony lynn said recently with the day where like assistant coaches finally had like a basically kind of like a meet and greet with a lot of commanders reporters like john com scott abraham and a lot of those guys and I'm going to do probably a full breakdown of some of the most notable quotes from those interviews. It was kind of like a speed dating situation. They described it where it's like one, like the, you have an assistant coach and then that reporter gets to meet with them for a couple of minutes. Then they switch out and then that reporter goes to talk to another assistant coach and then another reporter talks to that other assistant coach. It's kind of like a rotation of people. So everybody gets a chance to talk to everybody basically. But Anthony Lynn says something very interesting saying that he was offered the offensive coordinator job by Ron Rivera last year. We're going to talk about why that's very interesting and then we have a lot more to talk about including things like how the commanders may end up having a game in brazil also the washington commanders have one of the worst streaks going on in the nfl i'm gonna tell y'all which one that is and why it's not a good thing at all also commanders fans have been voted amongst the most sober in the nfl which is really random. Doug Williams was at the HBCU Combine. So we're going to talk about the fact that he was there. Shouts out to him because he's from Louisiana. It happens in Louisiana. Shouts out to Doug Williams for his contribution there. And I just love the fact that we're doing everything that we can to try to highlight these HBCU players as much as possible. I still feel like it's still a little bit underreported and overlooked, but you know, there's progress. And of course, to do my part, we're gonna talk about some notable standouts from the HBCU Combine as well. And then also, RFK Stadium is making legal progress. So is the next Burgundy and Gold Stadium destined to be in DC? We're gonna talk about all of that and more, but before we do, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned, follow the content. I have so many fun ideas, and this wasn't one of them. This kind of just came out of nowhere. I saw a lot of different information. Some of the things we're talking about today, I've had them in my notes to the side for like a few days maybe a couple of weeks now and i just felt like this was the perfect time to compile all of the random information and topics into one rico report but all, this whole thing started with us signing two players from the 2023 practice squad to basically be a part of the commander's 2024 90 man roster going into offseason workouts and things like that but i have so many other fun video ideas like another like seven that i'm excited to get to y'all but this just took priority because this was technically a report of something that happened that actually kind of matters to the commanders today we're going to get to the, all of the other stuff soon may even do another video like way late tonight slash early tomorrow morning y'all know i'm liable to upload a video at 3 a.m 4 a.m 5 a.m 6 a.m so we'll see just stay tuned for all of those videos i'm sorry for this extremely long intro i'm just really excited let's go ahead and get to it man let's get it All right, so the commanders have signed guard slash center. Really, you can call him an interior offensive lineman, Mason Brooks, and wide receiver slash punt returner, Casimir Allen. And both of those were guys that I was hoping would make the 53-man roster. I was rooting for those guys. 
before the 2023 regular season even started like they were some of my favorite players in the training camp and things like that in the preseason um and i'm just happy to see that the 2024 commanders led by adam peters eugene shin dan quinn josh harris amongst many others value those guys a lot as well because there are a lot of other practice squad players from the commanders from 2023 that they could have signed for them to go ahead and sign those two guys especially this early is very significant um so i'm i'm really excited i like mason brooks's talent i like casimir allen's talent especially as a potential punt returner is casimir allen our answer at punt returner instead of going to get one in free agency instead of re-signing a jamison crowder who's an unrestricted free agent instead of maybe drafting a guy or at the very least, Kazma Allen is going to be a part of the competition for starting punt returner. I mean, this is a clean slate, y'all. I don't think y'all understand. I feel like some of y'all don't have necessarily completely grasped the concept of this is a clean slate. This is open tryouts. New owner. Because, again, Josh Harris didn't officially buy the team until after the draft. This is Josh Harris's first free agency and draft. First of all, at the NFL level, period, but specifically, most importantly, with the Washington Commanders. So new owner going into this combine, going into free agency, legal tampering period, all of that type of stuff, draft, all of that. First time owner. This is a new GM, new head coach, new everything, literally except for wide receivers coach, quarterbacks coach, and then like another random positional coach. Everybody else is completely new. So for those guys to look at the Commanders 2023 roster and to look at that entire practice squad and be like, we want those two guys, it says something about these two guys. I really think it's, it's pretty significant news. Now, granted, it's not like we're expecting Mason Brooks or Casimir Allen to go out there and be starters for us this upcoming season or to necessarily be like cornerstone franchise players that you build the team around, but they're still really significant. And with the fact that we're signing them on February 22nd, legal tampering period doesn't even start till March 11th, shows that they're trying to get the work. We're already, that. I, another thing that I really like is that means that Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, and everybody are already starting to look at 2023 Commanders film and starting to really look at, okay, this guy has some potential here. This guy has some potential. They're starting to identify what our biggest weaknesses are, what should be our priorities going into free agency, going into the draft. So the fact that they felt the need to sign these guys lets you know that they have at least somewhat of a a decent grasp or at least they're starting to grasp what this roster is looking like but again this is a clean slate so terry mclaurin granted is our highest paid receiver he's technically our number one receiver according to depth chart but what depth chart with an entirely new organization everybody has to earn their keep they need to go out there and perform to earn their spot there's no guaranteed starters going from 2023 to 2024 like deron Payne and jonathan allen Joe Witt Jr. spoke highly of them and Dan Quinn did as well. But, you know, these guys got to go out there and look like starters to become starters. There's no previous relationship with any of these players. There's no rapport. Just assuming that people that were starting for us last year are going to start for us this upcoming season. And then also with so many unrestricted free agents like Cameron Curl, Curtis Samuel, Kendall Fuller, so many starters from 2023 that maybe we don't even end up bringing back. This roster is wide open. So Mason Brooks and Casimir Allen probably have a bigger chance of making the 53 man roster and contributing to this team in regular season games than you probably think. I wouldn't bet on it, but hey man, you may be surprised. Also with makes me really excited about this is that free agency is starting like this is technically again i reiterate adam peters and company's first personnel move and decision now granted other teams are out here doing contract extensions i think i saw somebody do it i'm not even sure if that's legal yet maybe i'm tripping but i definitely did see other teams out there signing free agents from other teams but of course if you're signing a free agent right now before free agency actually opens up legal tampering period march 11th free agency new league year march 13th that means that that player was already a free agent before the 2023 season ended so like how the chiefs just went and signed the kicker is because that guy was already no longer on the team before the 2023 regular season even ended. So that's why they're able to do that. If you want to go sign a guy like that that's already available before the new league year starts officially as of March 13th, then you can do that. Because like technically, Curtis Samuel, Cameron Curl, Kendall Fuller, Antonio Gibson, Khalid Hudson, a lot of these got James Smith, Williams, Case Hill, just to name a few. All of these potential unrestricted agents from the commanders cannot be signed by the commanders or any other teams because technically the league year hasn't ended until march 13th technically legal tampering period march 11th so technically they're still on our team in a way but 
basically as of march 13 they no longer will be that's why we make decisions we base our opinions we form our draft boards our free agency boards our team needs around the fact that they won't be here but technically no other team can go out there and just sign Cameron Curl right now. It has to be somebody that was already not on the team. That's why practice squad players count because they're technically not a part of the 53-man roster, which is why Mason Brooks and Kazmir Allen were able to be signed by Adam Peters and company. But again, I'm just really happy that free agency is starting to kick up. It's technically not free agency yet, but we're starting to see teams make moves. You know, we're still hearing announcements about this team may franchise tag this player. This team does not plan on franchise tagging this player. Like, it's a lot of information coming out. And then the combine coming up where everybody is together. Coaches, scouts, GMs, owners. Everybody's together. That's when we're going to start to hear trades starting to be put together. Even though we won't necessarily hear any, any like, official announcements till like, March 11th. But that's where a lot of the behind-the-scenes things go. Because that's going to be, like, the main place where everybody's at. A lot of people were at the Senior Bowl, but everybody's about to be at the Combine. So that's where a lot of trades are going to potentially be agreed to, like, in principle, behind closed doors. Basically, not to the knowledge of the NFL and all of those guys, the transaction wire and things like that. So it's about to be, whoo, we about to get the work. Man, we got the combine, free agency, draft. We about to have players flying back and forth with teams, we meeting with them, working out for them, face-to-face -face meetings and things like that. It, bro, it's kicking up. We're so close, man. That's why I have so many videos I got to get out now before we get to all of that because a lot of my things are like predictions or should the Washington Commanders pursue this guy. Those videos are going to be pointless after free agency, after we already know that we didn't or already did. Um, so, again, even though these moves that are being made so far are pretty mild, I just still love it, man. There's still moves. It's the beginning of what's going to be a very chaotic next few months, man. And again, these are technically signings. So Mason Brooks and Casimir Allen are technically being signed by the Washington Commanders. Not even necessarily kept or retained because they're practice squad players. They're technically not on the roster. I mean, now those two are, but everybody else on the Washington Commanders practice squad in 2023 is technically not on the roster yet. Adam Peters and Dan Quinn are going to have to want those guys. And again, for them to go out of their way to make sure they got these two guys first. And then they'll figure everything else out, lets you know how much they prioritize these players. And I'm not surprised. Mason Brooks was a high-level undrafted free agent. He had, like, the biggest contract out of any undrafted free agent all last year. Like, he had, like, the most you can pay an undrafted free agent. He was wanted by a lot of teams, and he basically chose us. That's why a lot of people say it's literally better to be an undrafted free agent than to be, like, a sixth or especially, like, a seventh-round pick. Because you get to choose, basically. You get to be like, okay, I want to go there, and you're basically getting about the same money. Money, you get to control where you go shouts out to mason brooks for choosing us and then once again choosing us again under the adam peters regime that's going on and the fact that they chose him and kazma allen is really significant um and then of course kazma allen showed promise as a return specialist during training camp last year i thought he may honestly win the job um then he didn't but i'm excited about him potentially winning it this time around and then also brooks had potential as a depth piece on the offensive line both were members of the practice squad last season of course also shouts out to my boy rush manual because it's not a background information fun fact without rush manual involved and he brought up the fact that even though cliff kingsbury doesn't want labels on his offense and he doesn't want people necessarily calling his offense the air raid offense it is still significant that Mason Brooks played in an air raid offense at Western Kentucky. So, shouts out to Rush Manuel for digging that up. That may be the reason why he was one of the priority signings for this new commander's regime. Maybe Cliff Kingsbury was the guy that specifically wanted him. Maybe even more than like a Dan Quinn or an Adam Peters. And then those guys agreed and signed off on it. But maybe this is a Cliff Kingsbury signing. And then when it comes to Casimir Allen, I mean, I, granted, he is a receiver with some potential to him. But I see him as more of a punt returner than a receiver. And so maybe that's a Larry Izzo move right there. Who knows? Really interesting though. Now moving on to the next topic. I mean, we've already been talking like that topic was like 10 minutes alone. So that was longer than I expected. Um, so this video is probably going to end up being longer than I expected. But either way, we're moving on to Anthony Lynn. And apparently, again, like I said before the intro video, that he disclosed the fact that he was offered the offensive coordinator job by Ron Rivera last year, which is really interesting, man. That's that's some important information right there. I'm very surprised. I mean, hey, I'm happy that he didn't take it, though. Apparently, 
we offer them the job does that mean that they actually preferred anthony lynn over eric Bieniemy? and if anthony lynn would have said yes back then we wouldn't have ever had eric Bieniemy. but then at the same time anthony lynn probably would have gotten fired with everybody else and then he wouldn't be our run game coordinator now i mean you just never know what type of butterfly effect that could have happened from him accepting that offensive coordinator position i mean even just sam howell and how much better he could have potentially been under anthony lynn with him being his offensive coordinator last year is one thing that i mean there's so many different aspects to this like if anthony lynn didn't accept it last year the fact that he's willing to accept it this year shows that he didn't want to be work for ron Rivera as a job title higher than what he is now with adam peters and dan quinn and cliff kingsbury he's not even the offensive coordinator he's under that he's the run game coordinator and running backs coach he accepted that but turned down the ron Rivera offensive coordinator position he must have I, I don't even think it's necessarily personal with ron Rivera. he just probably read the tea leaves read between the lines like man this is not stable and he probably foresaw this situation that Eric Bieniemy's in where you could argue that a lot of bad that happened last year wasn't necessarily his fault. I feel like a, some of it was, of course, and maybe, you know, you depending on who you ask, some people feel like the majority was him. And I mean, but everybody can argue that he was dealt a bad hand. Now, whether he made the most of it or not, that's where we're having debates. But he was dealt a bad hand last year. And maybe Anthony Lynn had the foresight to basically look ahead and be like, nah y'all not gonna get me y'all can get that guy maybe he's a little bit more desperate than me but i'll stay here as the 49ers running backs coach and keep working with christian mccaffrey and let's go to the super bowl real quick of course his goal was to win a super bowl but he definitely chose right sticking with the 49ers going to a super bowl rather than taking the commander's offensive coordinator position last year and then basically being thrown under the bus and used as a scapegoat because again you can easily argue that a lot of the problems that we had from eric um, from the commanders last year especially on offense were Eric Bieniemy's fault, especially his reluctance to run the ball when we were running at times like five yards per carry. He just refused to for some crazy reason, but he was still dealt a terrible hand and he's definitely receiving more blame than he deserves. And Anthony Lynn was probably like, yeah, I'm good. I can already see this going um, off the wall. Josh Harris just got there as the owner. He's probably going to want to bring in his new coaching staff. Ron Rivera is probably out the door. So whoever he hires is probably out the door with him. So he probably was just like, man, I'll just wait my turn. I'll wait till after after the dust settles and all of that chaos ends and and, we, and we're, we're at a smooth transition everything is a fresh start and then I'll come in so I don't think it's necessarily like no Ron Rivera I don't want to be the head coach or the offensive coordinator for your team and I'd rather be the run game coordinator for Dan Quinn's team I don't think it's that simple I think it's more so him just looking at what Eric literally what Eric Bieniemy is dealing with right now where he doesn't have a job Anthony Lynn didn't want to be in that situation basically so shouts out to him man but shouts out to Schmitty Sports Takes on Twitter because he brings up a great point which is something I briefly mentioned earlier I feel like Sam Howe probably could have been better with Anthony Lynn as an offensive coordinator. Now, granted, hindsight is 2020. Um, I didn't expect Eric Bieniemy's offense to look that bad last year. So, of course, it's easy to say that now because it's kind of like you can't get much worse when you're at the bottom. The only way you can go is up. So there's that argument, of course. But going back to Smitty Sports Takes, he said bummed how he turned down the job last year. How would have likely have been much better if the entire offense wasn't dropped on his shoulder in the first year as a starter. Because, of course, Anthony Lynn is going to come in and you're going to run the ball. That's why he's here as the run game coordinator, the running backs coach to Cliff Kingsbury. As far as reputation goes, pass heavy offense. Anthony Lynn is that strong voice where Cliff Kingsbury is going to have no choice but to listen to his opinions and take them to account. And this is going to be a very balanced offense because Anthony Lynn at worst will demand it to be. And Schmitty brings up a great point. Easy buttons, Cliff, balance, Lynn. Great point, man. This uh, Things could have gone smoother last year. You could argue if Anthony Lynn was our offensive coordinator, but things happen for a reason. And I'm happy that he's here now rather than him being here last year, him receiving a lot of blame that it wasn't his fault. And then now we don't have him going into 2024 with the new regime. Also, shouts out to Resh Manuel again for bringing up these great points. What's extra amusing about that is Rivera and Lynn met up right after Rivera played at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. And everybody else was like, why isn't Rivera at the Senior Bowl? Why he's golfing with celebrities and all that? type of stuff turns out he was also apparently offering anthony lynn the offensive coordinator job back then and i feel like a couple of people and i don't remember if i said it or not but i remember there being a rumor around like maybe he was at that little golf tournament with the celebrities probably you know mingling shaking hands and maybe even offering somebody a job i think somebody maybe even threw anthony lynn's name out there and now looking back 
that's probably what did happen. A lot of people, I do remember people being upset that Ron Rivera was not at the Senior Bowl, and it was probably because he was putting all of his eggs in one basket. I'm like, I, I know it sucks to miss the Senior Bowl, but I'm really trying to get this Anthony Lynn guy, and it's definitely looking like more so that Anthony Lynn turned it down, and maybe Rivera preferred Anthony Lynn even over an Eric Bieniemy, which is really interesting. Also, Rich Manuel continues to point out that Lynn is not the most creative play caller, but I think he deserves another head coaching opportunity. And he points out the fact that with a 0-4 start with a relocated LA Chargers team from there on, basically the the organization just lost faith in him it wasn't even his fault they just already painted a narrative off of the fact that they started at zero and four because three of the losses were by three points or less but people don't bring that up they were 22 and eight over the next 30 games people don't bring that up they were 12 and four in 2018 the team's best season in at least a decade people don't bring that up and they also finished the 2020 season with four straight wins before he got fired so this is a guy that's kind of been did wrong already, which is probably why he had the foresight to not deal with what Eric Bieniemy dealt with. But from Eric Bieniemy's point of view, this is boom or bust. If your offense looked great, you were going to probably get like you were going to be highly demanded as far as head coaching jobs went, like how Ben Johnson was this cycle. You're going to they're going to look at you like you took Sam Howell and that terrible dysfunctional organization led by Ron Rivera, Martin Mayhew and all of these guys and made them explosive and consistent and efficient on offense. So I see the boomer bust. I see why Eric Bieniemy took that chance and I can also see why a guy like Anthony Lynn wouldn't because he's already been through that he's already been through a situation where he's been blamed for things that wasn't his fault but I can see from Eric Bieniemy's point of view it makes sense because the potential positives of this outweigh the potential negatives you take this opportunity and if, he, and if it would have worked out Eric Bieniemy would have been like the next Ben Johnson and it would have been us Commanders fans screaming, hoping that we promote him to be our head coach. And But unfortunately, it didn't work out. And so now he's basically out there with technically no job, even though he was apparently helping the Chiefs in their Super Bowl run um, the like past few weeks or the past couple of months or something like that. So maybe they'll bring him back in some smaller role or something like that. But basically, I can see, I'm just saying that I see why Eric Bieniemy took that chance. Eric Bieniemy probably had the same foresight as Anthony Lynn, but was probably just like, man, I got to take it though i'm trying to eat and sadly it didn't work out for him though also as far as anthony lynn shouts out to justin from richmond for pointing this out that's why lynn is such a huge hire as they say you have to be able to run in the winter and his position will allow him to have more control if cliff ends up faltering like if he ends up just going off the deep end because typically one of the biggest gripes that people have with a cliff kingsbury led offense especially when he was the head coach for the cardinals is that after a certain point they, they look great the first half of the season after a certain point once defenses figure them out he tries to make adjustments some of them work some of them don't but typically overall the narrative is that his offenses don't counter back once defenses counter him midway through the season he hasn't done a great enough job of countering back and basically justin from richmond is bringing up the point and i brought this point up in other videos as well is that anthony lynn basically raises the floor of what a cliff kingsbury could potentially be or even like a bobby johnson on as our offensive lines coach coming from the giants being their offensive lines coach anthony lynn's presence basically makes us like we can't be but so bad because anthony lynn is in the building basically our offensive line can't be but our run game can't be but so bad just because you have anthony lynn as your run game coordinator and running backs coach and the same goes for cliff kingsbury great point by justin from richmond that even if cliff kingsbury gets to a point where we get to that second half of the season he's not able to make adjustments guess who can anthony lynn and he'll come through and contribute whatever he needs to and basically show cliff kingsbury hey man when defense is counting you like this this is how you get them back it, so and basically Justin from Richmond goes on to say that the framework exists with Anthony Lynn in the building to mitigate that ineptitude that Cliff Kingsbury has shown through second halves of season. So I'm very excited. Again, this Anthony Lynn hire is definitely a home run hire. Um, I mean, I don't think people really understand. You could argue it was probably our best hire as far as what their credentials say and then what role they're taking here this is an ex-head coach ex-offensive coordinator ex-play caller and he's just here to be a run game coordinator running backs coach that's huge man i mean a lot of our other hires may matter more but anthony lynn you could argue is the biggest hire because to get him to grab him 
and that's going to do the same thing here as what he was doing with the Super Bowl 49ers with Christian McCaffrey as his running back, Kyle Shanahan as his head coach. I mean, to be able to pull that guy away, to not even give him a promotion, don't even give him the assistant head coach title, to come do the same thing here in a rebuild is monumental. That shows that not only Anthony Lynn, but everybody is buying into what the commanders have going on in the future. I'm excited. Now we're on to the random and interesting and fun part of the Rico Report where we're going to kind of go through rapidly through a lot of random information and updates. First of all, the NFL announced on February 5th that the Eagles would host a Friday night game in Brazil going into the opening weekend of the season. Why this matters for the Commanders? Because the Commanders have opened against the Eagles more than any other team in the past seven years. Three times in a four-year stretch between 2017 and 2020. So if there's any team that's most likely to play the Eagles in that opening hosting Friday night game in Brazil, we have the highest odds. So it's there's a strong chance that the Commanders could be playing in Brazil. Really interesting. Also, shouts out to Chad Wicko, Chad Ryan over there. I believe he's in Australia. Shouts out to him, brought up a great point. It's a sad point, but it's a great point, and it's something that needs to be acknowledged. And this is why us just completely trashing everything from the previous regime and starting all the way over was definitely warranted because the Washington Commanders now have the third longest streak in the NFL since winning a playoff game. The only teams worse than us are the Dolphins and the Raiders. And I'm not too confident in the Dolphins letting that streak go on too long. And then we'll see about the Raiders with um, Antonio Pierce, but they rallied behind him. They outperformed any expectations that they had after Antonio Pierce was hired, well, basically elevated to be the interim head coach. So that's a team that that streak may not even last much longer there as well. So, hey, man, watch out. Commanders, you don't want to be the team in the NFL with the longest streak since winning a playoff game. We, we better get busy. We better get going, hit this ground running. Also, this is extremely random. But backtrack, as a part of our How America Drink series, we analyzed over 28,000 anonymous BAC test results to determine which fan base drank the most during the 2023-2024 NFL season. The Washington Commanders fans ranked 29th with an average game day BAC of 0.58. So, doesn't matter at all, but I just thought it was some random interesting information, something you could potentially bring up in a conversation and sound smarter. You're welcome. The commanders of the 29th most sober fan base at their games. Interesting. Also, now this is more important. I probably should have led with this. Doug Williams was present at the HBCU Combine that went down last week, and I'm very happy to see that. First of all, he's from Louisiana where the Combine happens, so that makes a lot of sense as well, but I love how he always does everything he can to go back to his school, to go to other schools, to go to the HBCU Combine. He's always supporting HBCUs and everything, so Doug Williams, even beyond the fact of what you did being the first black quarterback to ever go to and win a Super Bowl as a starter, that's monumental already, but then even outside of his NFL career he's doing everything he can for the community man so i really appreciate him man big shouts out to doug williams i'm happy you're a part of the organization no matter which your title is i'm just happy to have you around i feel like they should have him in front of a microphone speaking as long as it's not talking about what our draft plans are i want doug williams in front of a microphone as often as possible because i love everything he's doing for this organization and what he just means to the organization as a whole but the 2024 HBCU Combine was held on February 19th at the Oshner Sports Performance Center in New Orleans, Louisiana. This is the third year of the event. This is fairly new, which aims to highlight players who graduated from HBCU programs and have declared for the 2024 NFL Draft. I love this. I feel like I still feel like we need to do more. I feel like this is definitely not enough because we still go drafts even again this is the third year of the hbcu combine but we still go drafts without a single hbcu player drafted so you know we still have a lot of work to do but i love the fact that this is like a this is a great starting point and shouts out to doug williams with his fame with his name with his face that holds weight he's going to these events and you know it's bringing camera crews it's bringing more interest there so again thank you doug williams for that but now when we're talking about the biggest winners from the 2024 nfl hbcu combine we have gerald j huggins of fan nation sports illustrated.com he pointed out a lot of the top guys from there you have jonathan huggins safety from jackson state make sure you keep that name in mind you have jarvion howard running back from alcorn state you have ian willer running back from howard i know a lot of y'all in the dmv area probably already aware of him you have travion green linebacker from prairie view 
A&M. You have Eric Smith, cornerback from Florida A&M. Then you have Davius Richard, quarterback from North Carolina Central. Jaheim Hazel, cornerback from Jackson State as well. Zerion Hayes, edge from Alabama A&M. Darian Brokenberg, edge from Howard. Another Howard guy that a lot of y'all DMV people are probably already aware of. But those are just a few names that I wanted to point out that you know, make sure you keep track of those guys. And there's a running list of everybody that participated in the HBCU Combine. Um, we will be here for a long time if I read out every single name. But I need to go ahead and actually just put a link to this information in my chat because I feel like I need to at least play my part somewhat. At the very least, I could put the link to these names of individuals to hopefully spread more awareness of their availability in the 2024 NFL Draft. I may even try to include some of them in one of my mock drafts. Maybe like not to just be completely unrealistic and draft one of them in the first round, but at least like a sixth round or a seventh round sleeper type of thing. So um, yeah, let me make sure I include that link in the description. I got to at least play some part in this. And then lastly, before we get up out of here, shout out to JP Finn for tweeting this out earlier today at 5 p.m. More good news on the RFK Stadium situation. A bill is up for floor consideration next week, which means could pass the house before the end of the month. So we're making progress because there's a lot of legal stuff in the way. It's not even necessarily money. It's not even necessarily if DC wants to or if Josh Harris wants to. There's this whole thing about how the government technically owns it. And it's just so much chaos and legal stuff in the way. So many just random hurdles that we got to get over on the whole legal side of things. And so this is progress, though. This is progress. It's, I'm not saying that the new Commander Stadium will definitely be an RFK, but the chances of it happening are definitely increasing by the day with all of the major moves and progress and steps that we're making over time, over the past few months, and really like the past year. We've made some major moves, especially Josh Harris buying the Commanders and getting rid of Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder no longer owning the Commanders was probably the biggest step. But now Josh Harris and the people in D.C. and stuff like that, all of those guys are doing everything in their power. Mitchell Rails, all of these guys are doing everything behind the scenes to try to help the situation. I'm pretty sure Jason Wright is contributing in some way as well. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button. Stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. I really appreciate y'all. Make sure, make sure y'all stay tuned. I have so much content i'm working on i'm all over the place man i mean i literally look and like man i don't even know which video i want to do next do i want to talk about that do i want to talk about that i have all of my notes ready all of my article references all of my tweets all of my own notes and research that i've done i have videos ready to go just need to be recorded and edited it's just all about finding the time man it's just video after video and um being out having it i went to the dentist early i mean it's just been i've been super busy so i'm trying to get out as many videos as possible at minimum I'm doing two a day so make sure you stay tuned at least for that if you haven't checked street scores this channel every day you're missing out because i'm doing at least minimum two videos a day i'm trying to get back to doing three so stay tuned man i really appreciate y'all and again i'm trying to um Amongst all of the other busyness I have going on, trying to set aside time to try to read and reply to as many comments as possible, even going back as far as a couple of weeks ago to a lot of the videos that I really want to reply to some of y'all. So stay tuned. I really appreciate y'all. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out. Oh.